really working. is on.
everyone. I'm glad you could join us in the snow. Yesterday it was 60, 62 out. It uh, was looking beautiful. And then God said, wait, you still got some more winter to go. Um, I was really looking forward to start planting some grass seed and putting in some rose bushes, but I also enjoy the snow. So do my kids, but uh, just a few announcements before we continue. Uh, Ash Wednesday, I believe it's March 3rd, if I remember correctly. Um, Good Friday will be at Audubon this year, and that will be happening with Logan Presbyterian. Uh, we are still looking for, if anybody is interested in uh, helping out with the, the tech and the worship online live service, because one day, soon, hopefully soon, or over the summer, we will be having uh, live music again, and I can't wait for that. And um, yeah, and that's, um, and for anybody who's worshiping at home, the video will be posted at 1045 in case we're having uh, feedback issues. Uh, but let's uh, continue our worship with I Could Sing of Your Love Forever. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. You know, sometimes in our faith, it's good to just kind of encourage one another, especially if we see somebody who's um, really walking well in their faith. Um, it's nice to be happy for them, and it's nice to encourage them. So um, I always like to sing songs about us just praising God and, and, and sharing that encouragement to others. So uh, this is a song about keeping it going and possibly praising forever. So I think that's appropriate. So. and the sea your river runs with love for me and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth and I will daily lift my hands for I will always sing of when our love came down I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when our love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love sing of your love forever. Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness I know. When the world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. I could sing of your sing of your love forever. Just want to welcome everybody again, in case you were scrolling through Facebook and you decided to join us live. And for everybody else who walked in, 
Welcome again. Uh, this week we're going to recite the Nicene Creed. It's in the um, United uh, the hymnal, if you're wondering or like to read along. It's uh, 880. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried again. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. It's great to be with you this morning. I found this great Bible verse from 2 Corinthians 4, 6. God, who first ordered light to shine in darkness, has flooded our hearts with his light so that we can enlighten men with the knowledge of the glory of God as we see it in the face of Christ. So go and show his light, will you, this week? Now join me, even if you're home all alone, and uh, say the vision statement with me. We are a Christ-centered family of Christians. We are actively seeking to grow the kingdom of God by bringing the word and the love of God to the community. We may not always think alike, but we always love alike as God has taught us. So long. I am so excited. We have a different kind of Acts 29 challenge for you. I am going to show you how to be comfortable praying out loud with another person. Yes, you can. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to show you some simple steps on how to become an expert at praying out loud. Yes, you can. So why do we need this? Well, Praying out loud with another person helps you feel like Jesus is really right in the room with you. Praying together can help you both hear from the Holy Spirit. Praying together can build your faith and your confidence in God. And remember, when two or more of us are gathered together, he is there, right there with us. So stay tuned because next week we'll talk about how to find your prayer partner. God bless you.
Hi, good morning, boys and girls. Do you know tomorrow's Valentine's Day? I bet when you go to school, maybe you will have some Valentines to share with your classmates. Valentines and stores can be funny ones, or they can be really romantic ones. Yes. But you know what? The best Valentines that my children or grandchildren ever gave me were the ones that they made. Yes, because that's a way that they showed that they loved me. Jesus would like to hear you say, I love you, not just on Valentine's Day, but every day. But even more than saying, I love you, I think he would like you to show him how much you love him. How can you show him you love him? One way is to go to Sunday school which, by the way, is starting this week. Another way is by reading the Bible. And in the Bible, Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you want to show Jesus how much you love him, you will read the Bible and do what he tells us to do. Be kind to one another. Obey your parents. Those are two big things. So when you tell Jesus you love him, remember that he likes it even more when you show him by keeping his commandments. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we love you. Help us to show that love by doing what you have told us to do. Amen. Happy Valentine's Day and have a good week. Bye. This, week, uh, this week's prayer comes to us from Dr. Martin Luther King. I just wanted to highlight for February prayers that come from the African-American community and the ones that have just really stuck out with me. Um, most, most gracious and all wise God, before those who face the generations rise and fall, thou in whom we live and move and have our being, we thank thee for all of thy good and gracious gifts, for life and for health, for food and for raiment, for the beauties of nature and human nature. We come before thee painfully aware of our inadequ inadequacies and shortcomings. We realize that we stand surrounded with the mountains of love and we deliberately dwell in the valley of hate. We stand amid the forces of truth and deliberately lie. We are forever offered the high road, and yet we choose to travel the low road. For these sins, O oh God, forgive. Break the spell of that which blinds our minds. Purify our hearts that we may see. O oh God, in these turbulent days, when fear and doubt are mounting high, give us broad visions, penetrating eyes, and the power of endurance. Help us to work with renewed vigor for a warless world, for a better distribution of wealth and for brother and sisterhood that transcends race or color. In the name of Spirit of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And let's continue to pray at the words we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
Today's scripture comes from the third letter of John, verses 2 through 6. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health, just as it is well with your soul. I was overjoyed when some of the friends arrived and testified to your faithfulness to the truth, namely how you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than this, to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for, your friends, for the friends, even though they are strangers to you. They have testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on in a manner worthy of God. This is the word of the Lord. It might surprise you guys to hear that sometimes I find it hard to share my faith, especially with those that are um, closest to me. When I, I told my parents that I was going to go back to school, they, they didn't really understand what a chaplain did or does. I, I don't blame them. Most of my friends didn't know or what did, did know what a chaplain did. Um, being a new Christian with a, a call to minister which I thought my call was at the time, was the minister of those who were in the hospital. When I was 11, I had a surgery to put a metal bar in my neck. I had an extra little half a bone in my spine growing, which turned my head sideways and twisted it. Um, the surgery to repair it was, it was quite long. It was scary, even more so for my parents, because I was only 11 at the time, and. They gave me a whole big can of cherries when I woke up because that's what I wanted to eat. I ended up throwing up the entire thing, but my parents, they stayed in Philly because I had the surgery in Shriners, and they, they stayed with me the entire time. It was also the nurses that helped me and encouraged me. And that's how I decided or figured I would work in these hospitals. I knew I wasn't going to be a doctor. I knew I wasn't going to be a nurse, but I wanted to help I just wanted to help somebody who was in need. I wanted to be that sense of calm, that sense of understanding. And when I was at Jefferson, I, I found it really just so easy to talk to people about anything, be it my faith or their faith. Even when I was at Hope, when I was a youth leader, talking to the kids, it was easy. Talking to my friends and family, I found that to be just a little bit harder. Talking with other Christians at my old job, they talked about it so freely, and some of the youth I worked about it just, just talked about it so freely without a care in the world, and maybe it was the setting of the church, or maybe my friends at work felt comfortable talking to me about their faith. You know what? It kind of made me feel inadequate. It made me feel as if I had made a wrong choice in pursuing what I thought God had planned for me. I really started to wonder how many people are out there that have trouble speaking about their faith. I wonder if their troubles had to do with them feeling comfortable or uncomfortable. When did they start to feel comfortable? I, I had so many questions. What do you say? How do I say it? And just, just generally how, how to go about it. It was just, am I saying it correctly? That's why the creeds, the Nicene Creed and the Apostle Creeds, they're just so important. They were developed and recited years, thousands of years ago, but it lays it out easily for us. We believe in one God. We believe in one Lord. And we believe in the Holy Spirit. It's these creeds that help us explain our belief, especially when we can't say it ourselves. It's why reading John's letters are also so very important. It's learning about how this early church needed direction, about how to testify in front of strangers, in front of themselves. It's because we need the direction still today. That direction is that we pray, that we pray in all respects that we may prosper and be in good health, just as our soul will prosper. Now, I, when I read scripture, I like to look at the Greek words. I think they just speak volumes of what the words actually meant. So please 
Come along with me. We're going to learn three words today. Our first word is armatorio. It's our testimony. It's so much more than our ability to be able to say that we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The word martorio is used three times in this piece of scripture. It must be very, very important for us to remember. And I know that I, I sometimes, but sometimes we forget our testimony is more than just the words we speak. Our martorio is our life. It's our maturing in Christ. It's growing in Christ. It's living a life worthy of comparison to the sinless life of Christ. Our testimony, it's our lives. We do it every single day. Now, my friends have asked me if, um, if it has been hard for me to live a more Christ-like life, especially since I became a pastor. And yeah, and also no. As a Christian, I am called to be born again. I also know that my actions from strangers or anybody else will be just a little more under scrutiny now that I am a pastor, but it's not only that, I, I'm hard on myself. Did I pray the right words? Did I say something incorrectly? Now, I pray all the time to be used to be a light in the world of darkness because the truth is, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in what Christ did for us. I believe in the teachings of Christ. Now I can let my words be the testimony, but I can also let my life be the testimony. I've learned that my testimony is much, so much more than knowing the right things to say or at the right times. I've also learned that my testimony is unique to me. It's how I live out God's promise to me. It's how you live out God's promise to you. It's to pray and live out that testimony that will make our soul prosper. The second word, hugiano, used for our prosperous soul, it literally translates to hygiene. Now we can clean ourselves of the dirtiness of this world to be made pure in Christ. Our prayers, they can clean our souls. Our prayers can clean the souls of others. It's why prayer partners are just so important to pray with other people. For whatever we accomplish for our brothers and sisters, it moves us closer to walking in truth. It has accountability. It makes us clean. It helps us move toward a life like Christ. It will move us to love more like Christ especially when we pray for others. When we pray for others, our testimony is, is not just for us. Our matorio is for others. We are to bear our witness for others. Now, when I hear the word other, I hear different. I hear not the same. It's our third word, the suke, that John mentions. It's that vital breath of life that is breathed into us from creation. It's what makes every individual different. Just as God has created us, it's that suke which makes our testimonies unique. Just as I'm sure we all don't brush our teeth the same way, we don't, we don't all worship the same way. We don't all sing the same way. And we don't all pray the same way. And you know what? That's okay. As long as we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to me, your suke, your breath of life, means you are a child of God. That you are loved. Our actions, our love letters to our children, to our grandchildren, to everyone who is different than us. But what about ourselves? What are the letters that we will write to ourselves that maybe we open later today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year? How are we going to mature as Christians? Because yes, we can all mature as Christians. It's how can we continue to clean our souls 
to better articulate, to better say our testimonies, to live out our testimonies for our family, for our children, for our community, for ourselves. It's through that prayer. It's through that community. It's to participate in that church community. It's our daily testimony to the world that we may not be perfect. But you know what? We pray to God to be better each and every day. It's to bear our unique souls to the world, to get dirty doing the Lord's work. It's to come home day after day and clean ourselves in prayer. To use our testimonies to show strangers that our God, our loving God, can be their God too. That our Lord and Savior doesn't just want perfect people. He wants people that are broken. And in our brokenness, we find Jesus. Because we will do well to send them on their way in a manner worthy of God. Now, I would like to um, end today with reading Psalm 139 in its entirety. Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You understand my thoughts from afar. You scrutinize my path in my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, Lord, you know it. You have encircled me behind and in front, and you have placed your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high, I cannot comprehend it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take up the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will take hold of me. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me will be night. Even in not dark to you, and the night is a bright as day, darkness and light are like to you. For you created my most innermost parts, you wove me in my mother's wounds. I will give thanks to you because I am awesomely and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. And my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully formed in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my formless substance. And in your book were written all the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. How precious also are your thoughts of me, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would put down the wicked to death, God. Leave me, your men of bloodshed. For they speak against you wickedly, and your en enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with the utmost hatred. They have become my enemies. But search for me, God, and know my heart. Put me to test and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there is any hurtful way in me. And lead me into the everlasting way. And let's continue our worship with How Can We Name As Love? <laughs> Seek or find We 
of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.